Kenny. And so, uh, uh, Danny, please allow me. I'm going to read uh, what you wrote so everybody can hear it. And uh, Nado Sensei's already read it, and uh, he's ready for you. So, uh, Danny started. Uh, Thanks for this that you're doing for us all and being key to the virtual dojo. As you know, I have maintained a daily meditation for many years. This year has been a revitalization of that inner world for me. I have used grounding and getting squared away as preparation for seated meditation. A key that arose out of the ground for me was clear intent. What was I doing and what did I want? For so long, I was completely passive in meditating. The mapping you provided has become the active part of my meditation. This past six months of inner work has been deeply enriching and alive, and I feel supported. I feel like the inner work is lubricating my outer world. There is joy. Question, when I notice I am not at home, not feeling, but instead drifted off into some head trip, it's like I have jumped off the bus and don't notice till I've been off the bus for how long? So how do I catch that sooner, the jumping off? How do I maintain a sense feeling through character and has have less of the drift? Is that a pause there, Lauren? That's a pause for you, Sensei. That's a pause for me. Uh, I don't have the sheet with me, but I did a train station sheet uh, where I had something here and I went up and up and up and there I called them different stations Uh, so that's the drift you you drift up to and whatever Uh, one thing there is if we're a little more established in our sensing feeling uh, that Hopefully, as we get more present, settled feeling, that we'll feel the pushes, however you want to call them, the pushes, is is that okay? That start to come through the system, goes through my body, through my brain here, uh, and then on and on and on. So to catch those earlier might be a good trick. I tried to explain that by putting you guys, asking you to be in a wind tunnel and feeling, playing that game, feeling the first breeze pushing through and and sort of feeling, oh, it actually physically pushes me, maybe, for example. As it pushes through, I I start to feel a little quivering in my body, a little hum in my body. As it pushes through, I'm wondering about it. I'm starting to think. Um, So I put you in a wind tunnel, hoping you would catch the earlier stages of of that energy movement before you got too far out. Okay. Um, I I still think it's a good trick. I think we can all improve on on that. Uh, Because if we wait too long, it's not impossible to come back, but if we wait too long, then this becomes a reality. And the crazy thought that I may be thinking, that's real. There's nothing else. Uh, so we could get locked into potential craziness or on the other side, the nice side. I'm fantastic. Uh, so the negative or the positive of, of, of that. Anyway, to catch this activity before it goes off too far is a good trick. I think that's all I have to say about that. Okay, so Danny was the first to write in and he took his time to write quite a bit. And so the next thing is that Danny shared a story. And so I'm gonna read the story and it's not so much a question, but just a story. And then Nado Sensei is gonna come in. On a stormy Monday morning, first day of my working week, there is much to do. COVID has excited clients and projects are stalling. Get centered, establish some ground, Easy, easy. And what dear ground do you have today? And I heard the word sweet. All I could sense was sweet. And it made no sense to me, none at all. In fact, I was feeling quite frustrated. Sensei said, 
get squared away and keep the dialogue going. And so began a 20 minute, what seemed like an age, and then quite suddenly bursting up came perseverance. Now that I could understand. I know perseverance, oh yes. And I remember being harsh and hard and nothing was going to stop me. This was something different though. This was from a new center. Sensei said, it's good to soak in it. So I did like a hot tub or a bottle of wine. I don't, I didn't know it then, but what I was, what I was called to partake, when I was called to partake sweet, of sweet perseverance many times over the next three days, it was for a variety of important decisions and relationships. For three days, it was with me, like it was reminding me that it was there for me. Fantastic. I am not sure of the character's name, but I sensed it loved being allowed to live. The fourth and fifth days of the company of sweet perseverance slowly and elegantly faded. I feel so grateful. What an intelligence and organized friend to find. What a great week. The end of the story. Okay, great, Danny, great. Okay, uh, we can look at this a couple of different ways. Uh, when he's settling down, he bumps into an energy quality. Sweet. I, uh, Danny, I'm gonna dig you a little bit here for a moment. You're okay with that, right? Right. Sure. <laughs> uh, that he was trying to figure out sweet. Yes. I like that. Uh, Soak in the sweet, uh, experience the sweet. And it, from what he said, it took him too long to do that, but he finally caught it. It's sweet, okay? Another way of looking at this is uh, in doing the uh, border guards story, coming at it from a little different angle. He had to experience the sweet before he could move on to the next quality, which was, what, what was it, Danny? Uh, perseverance. So perseverance, yeah. Uh, so it's, it's like, oh, he's in a sweet zone and he has to experience it because he has to be sweeter to enter the realm of perseverance. So in a certain way, that was a guardian at the gate kind of set up, okay? Yeah. And a lot of people may have mucked it up by going, I don't want to be sweet. I'm going to do something else. And it's like, no, just be sweet. And, you know, we'll, we'll see what that's about as we soak in it for a bit. And what it's about is it gets you to perseverance. And as you're hanging out in that uh, uh, field, uh, that level, that vibration rate of perseverance, uh, then you did well with that because you realize, oh, the, the sweet and the perseverance are here. Uh, so they started to show as partners. So I would say sweet perseverance, persevering sweetly. sweetly. I like to double up the words and turn them here. You get a better balance. And that's what he really liked, that persevering sweetly and sweetly persevering. Then he caught, I like the way he said it, that it was different than his normal Danny, the, let's call it the first brain, semi-macho kiwi thing of persevering. Yeah. He said, oh, this is a different kind of persevering. And that's a pattern. Uh, you track it back. Uh, at first it's heavy and it's in the, uh, let's say the bad form of persevering, you know, where you push your wife out of the way because you're persevering on your goal to get to the coffee. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, anyway, stop me before I go crazy here. And, Anyway, uh, yes, you're at a different level of perseverance, and that's sort of how it works. There's a thick form, and then a not-so-thick form of that same word, and then a finer level of that same word. Eventually, it may want to change its name as it gets finer and finer. Be, be prepared for that to happen, uh, where it won't, call, it won't want to call itself perseverance anymore. It'll change into a, a finer level of that word. Is that, is that okay? That, that that real book. And then yeah, there's, yeah. if I may, there's, there's more, but we're taking, we're, we're spending taking a lot of time long. with Danny. So there's it's just, I'm going to just here, have good one good last good point, good Sensei. Go ahead. Okay. 
Okay. So Danny commented that he had taken some learning from the virtual dojo. And just the first one, if you will, Sensei, Danny wrote, I enjoy the character for the situation lesson. I get pissed off with some situations that are forced on me. In getting squared away, I ask, how best can I serve this situation? The character is always perfect, even though it often takes me a while to see it. This has been very helpful in my life. My lesson that I take away is don't study this situation. This has been a big one for me. This year, I got myself out of the way in my business, and I've never had it so good. Seriously. My turn? Yeah. Yeah. Don't study the situation. Uh, we brought that up, I think, a week ago, uh, uh, paraphrasing, I think, from Noah uh, Chen Man Ching, I believe, who said, it's a fool's errand to study the situation. You're being attacked. He's a martial artist. You're being attacked. Oh, let me study the attackers and what they're wearing and where they're coming from and why could they be attacking me? Uh, it's a fool's errand. You're dead by this time. There's a character equal to that situation. So if you're hanging out in the situation too long, you're dead in the water. Is that is sorry? I I, I like so, that observation, Danny. And so with that, I'm going to thank Danny. If you have any last okay. questions, and then we're going to go on to the next person. No, thank you very much. Thank you okay. Thank you. And so the next person is Carl Tissol. And Carl, I hope you can turn your camera on. And uh, Ken Cron will manipulate the spotlights to bring you up here if we can. And while that's happening, I'm going to read what Carl wrote for everybody. Carl wrote, I appreciate the various approaches and perspectives on situation slash character alchemy, and dimensionality. It helps me develop my own study. Repetition of various aspect, aspects of the teachings is fine with me as I am a slow learner. I do not understand Nadeau's trust in the benevolence of the process. If the field or ground we are immersed in is so smart, where then does human stupidity and human evil come from? I suppose this needs, means I need to mix up a character that understands faith, blind faith, and confidence with or without facts backing them up. This shouldn't take me more than 400 years or so. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Carl. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, 400 years, the... Uh... I'm slow factor. Oh, Sensei, back in the day, they very clearly not go. You can catch what I do in three months, but Nado, you have to catch it. I always believed them, but I'm approaching 60 years. Could that be right? 60 years? Yeah, I'm approaching 60 years of tracking this. So, Carl. We're all slow. I'm slow. I believed him three months, but I'm 60 years in, getting warmer. Uh, so don't don't go crazy with that. The human condition. Okay. If it was that easy, we'd all be transformed into Christ-like beings, a la o sensei. Gah! It's going to take a little bit longer than that. Live with it. Uh, uh, bad people. If the eye is tight and they're control freaks or power freaks or whatever, yeah, they're going to do lousy things. If they clean up their act, who am I really, and do an inner work, then we can get some benevolence and what, whatever. Uh, so uh, that crazy stuff is because we got locked in tighter and tighter and we torqued and twisted some more. Uh, we can still unwind and come back. But uh, human condition, okay? Uh, the, so basically, it's the I, misogi, easy the I. Because if I'm a tight Bobby, or if I'm a weird Bobby, I'm not a nice guy. I'm, a, I'm fucking dangerous, okay? 
Easy the eye. Easy the eye. And after a while, I'm not that guy. Easy the eye. Settle, hush, open, easy, easy. But, but don't I? No, no, no. Come on back. Easy the eye. Settle down. And suddenly, suddenly, I feel a bit better about the world. I even like you, Carl. Okay. Should we move on? Did I cover that? Oh, okay. Thank you, Sensei. My, Thank you, my job is to listen. <laughs> ah, I meant to start a warm-up. I forgot. Uh, of just having you people settle with the sense of, as you settle, get to a better level. So that's why I left the... Uh, oh, uh, so you could listen better. And if you had something to say, you could say it from a better place. So I meant to do that the first few minutes and I forgot, sorry. But uh, thank you, Carl, for reminding me. As you settle more, you hear it better. I, I read a lot of old senseis, old notes uh, that I uh, have. Uh, and, and I'm settling more. I, I, I read more, I see more there, I hear more there. It's clearer. Even though I might have read them 20 other times before, as I settle more, more comes to me. So that, that kind of thing. Settle more and you speak from a better place and you can listen from a better place. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Sensei. Uh, the next uh, comments is from Diana Daphner. And Diana wrote for Sensei Bob, can you talk about musubi to join, connect, unify, tie together? I don't recall having heard the word back in my dojo days. Maybe blending is what you used? When I mentioned the word to you a few months ago, you said something about being at one of the what? The properties? Properties of what? I'm not sure. I didn't write it down and I don't recall. <laughs> It seems, well, Sensei, do you want to take that far about Musubi? Uh, okay, first part, I didn't use, uh, Diane, I didn't use that many Japanese words in those days. I still prefer not to use Japanese words. I think it puts the non-Japanese speakers down a bit. Oh, I don't understand. So we throw out English words, okay? Uh, there are a couple of special Japanese words that are hard to turn into English. I might throw out a couple there. Uh, oh, since I use them now and then. Uh, so you know you got to kind of get in there with that word. Uh, but uh, where am I? Uh, that things want to harmonize and come together. See, in creation, this great one thing, which was everything, to create had to move into uh, um, a double spin. We call it a great he, she, or whatever you want to call that. Okay, it couldn't create without two. So to create, it had to break into two. And everything broke into two along the way. Now, as we settle, uh, two, we can use the two thing pattern uh, to unwind and head back towards our finer, truer self. So for example, when we just work the, uh, the uh, body character system, we play energies up and down is one of my presentations. Okay, All right? And as we get more harmony between the beats up and the beat down, I begin to feel more centered, a little more squared away here. Then I have you do another practice. We've done it on a Friday night where I say, let this force talk to that force. And let's call him one force he and the other force she. And he says, and then she retorts. Then he adds on and says, and she, hmm, and retorts. And at first, they're kind of potentially can be real bitchy at each other. I don't trust you. Well, I never liked you in the first place. They can be real bitchy. But as we continue letting the forces, uh, their dialogue begins to change. As there's more room, uh, their dialogue begins to change and they get friendlier. I sort of think of them as suddenly holding hands and suddenly dating and suddenly having 
uh, being engaged, and, and, and that naturally happens. That's just one part of the system, the character center line part, okay? Then there's another thing of the same, and that's where the character is in relation to the situation. That's the same pattern, but now the picture's gotten bigger. We're talking about character and the situation. We could he, she with those, okay? There's the situation and the character uh, rises to the occasion to be proper in that situation. There's a, a harmony trying to happen. Uh, so this uh, uh, bonding, coming together, magnetism, caring for, well, that's the next piece. Is that okay so far, Diane? Is that okay yeah. so far? Yeah. And, and uh, so if I, if I may, then Diane continued We've just broke it in the middle. It seems to me that there's a natural draw of feminine masculine energies toward each other. And that somehow this is important. Certainly has been important to me and my relationship and my work of all these years. Is it love? Is the joining blending at the heart of the ongoing activity of creation? I look forward to your comments if any. Okay, yeah, so just a continuation here. Uh, um, yeah, so we give them that male female name. Other cultures might give those two forces two different names, but yeah, uh, so he, he and she is fine, uh, or male female, I guess. Uh, of course, there's a natural draw because they came out of one thing. Of course, they want to get back together as a step before the one thing. So it behooves us in the universe to allow these harmonies to experience, not just know. You can know this in a few minutes. I can lay it out here and you can know it. The knowing of it is part one. Part two is the experience of, of it. And at, so as we experience the harmony of energies coming together, uh, there's minor sex along the way, so to speak. Uh, better energies mix up or breed, if you would, a better character. How do I get to Robert? Bobby Easy makes a little room, and the forces that are there mix up and down, and they mix up Robert. And then I continue, Easy, same pattern. So, so they breed. They're attracted to each other. It's built into them to be attracted to each other. Once we give them room, once we easy, once we get the tight eye who's trying to look at everything out of there, easy, be present, but don't be controlling. And those energies are allowed to move and they'll move towards each other in a harmonious manner. It's built into the system, okay? Usually disharmony is something where I, I, and screwing it up. If I easy, the harmony can begin to show and the finer levels of harmony can begin to show. And eventually <laughs> the whole universal harmonies can begin to not only show, but be experienced. You can have a universal character there as a step before a mighty step. <laughs> anyway, uh, Diane, so, you so, look on your face. so, so Mus Musubi is is harmony at, at all these different whatever the dimension is. The Musubi is the original harmony and the lesser harmonies as well. Yeah, it goes all the way down. Uh, okay, the word love. Uh, let me jump in. Uh, down. Let's call it tributaries as opposed to a lake, as opposed to the ocean. As a okay, it comes all the way down. So when a lot of people use the word love, for them, it's a throwaway word. I just met you three minutes ago, I love you. It's like, they won't remember your name next week, but they throw that word out, okay? And I make a joke a little further up the line, they use the word love, but with stipulations, I love you. But if you eat my Twinkies, asshole, I hate you. Mm -hmm. You know, these stipulations. Uh, so love is too easy a word. Oh, sensei said, the love that he talks about in this finer, 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 finest, uh, most original, is not the love that people use. It's, it's, it's something where 
things are so connected, so non-separate, that there's something there that that he would call love. But I, it's almost like I wish he hadn't said that word because you're down there saying, oh, love. Yes, I love you. I understand love. I'm loving until you're an asshole, in which case I hate you. Uh, but that kind of thing. So, uh, so yeah, it tributaries down so the words have less impact. See, that's what I mentioned to Danny when he caught, hey, this level of, what was his word? Yeah. Huh? Perseverance. Whoa, this level of perseverance is not my old use and my own experience, my old experience of perseverance. Whoa, this is a whole different level of perseverance. And it goes on and on and on. Okay, but we have to move on. Thank you. Thank sure. you, Sensei. And next up is uh, Dusty. Dusty Niles. Dusty, Dusty. And okay. uh, Dusty, uh, 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 I'm going to just jump to your question, if you don't mind. Yeah, no worries. Right, so uh, so uh, Nado Sensei Dusty wrote, I am curious why people fall in love with Aikido and who the demographic is that's drawn to Aikido. What do you think we share in common? It's too big, Dusty. Uh, the demographics are, are, are too, too big. Uh, me, myself, I want to present O Sensei's inner work okay and that's what i want to major in because it too easily could could be lost is being lost uh so i don't want to go into the big demographics and some guys coming in because they want to uh, uh have a better fight at the bar this saturday uh, uh it's, it's too all over the place so i don't want to go there okay well, and so dusty i'm going to jump to your next uh, oh. key point here. Are you okay with? Yeah. Um, well, I guess I'm curious, like, I guess being transparency here, um, like I feel a little biased in that I'm one of the ones that is the individuals that have been in and out of psychiatric units, right? So I have a labeled with a mental illness and bipolar, but what this work fast, I've only, I've only been here for seven months. So like, or right before the pandemic, I started with Noah Sensei. So I've spent a lot more time in Zoom than <laughs> in the real Tojo, right? I'm like, but I'm proud of, I'm like, I'm proud of my wife. Belt. I've fallen in love with this art, but it, it feels like it explains the diagnosis. It's, it's very, it fascinates me yeah. and um, I appreciate it. Yeah, so, no, the thank you. inner set, it would have, any degree of inner sense, you'll start to be able to say, oh my God, this is uh, an inner sense of how the universe works. Bing, there is Jung. So yeah, and any degree of inner, we'll have a better perspective. I don't know where we're going here. Uh, and if you, if you don't mind, Sensei, I'll just move to the next. Uh... Yes, comment please. and then you can follow up with Dusty. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, offline if, 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 uh, yes. if you'd like. Yes. <laughs> uh, and so, Dusty, uh, uh, you you referenced Michael Murphy, but uh, Sensei doesn't want to interpret what Michael Murphy said or didn't say. So we're going to skip that. But you did have a really good question in here. It's according to Nado Sensei when he and I looked at it earlier, and you asked. If we are the character, God inside of us, and the situation is God outside of us, and then in Aikido, do we move? Does Aikido help us move to help and progress? Yeah, we're back to that coming together again. So using, and I, I like that sense of, oh, that's an interesting way of looking at it. Uh, Personal character is has God God stuff in it. Situation has God stuff in it. Now, uh, God in this case it's separate. Uh, God can't or the original can't be separate, but in creation it separates out into two. So anytime we play with character and situation, situation and character, these two are coming together better to an eventual goal of getting that so. 
experienced so fine dimension that the next step is the pre of creation. Ooh. Okay, we'll move along on that. <laughs> thank you, Dusty. Yeah, thank you. And next up is Amy Bernstein. And back to Dusty for a second. If, oh. if you don't like anything I said, you can get my number from Nolan. Maybe I'll talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Amy. Amy. Amy from Amy, Florida. Amy wins the prize for most concise feedback. One sentence. That one. Please ask Bob to define how is he using the terms identity and character? Thanks, Amy. I have an identity of myself as this character. Let me reverse it. As this character, I have an identity of myself. I don't get it. Sorry, I get, Sweet sorry, Jesus. I get, Sweet I Jesus. get. No, no, stop it, stop it. The girl from the Bronx is a character. And at that moment, that's your identity. You're the girl from the Bronx. What don't you get here, Amy? I'm gonna cut you off any moment now, but try it. Hey, I took my curlers out, be nice. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I get the character is the version of yourself. I get that, you know. So Bobby, Bob, you know, Nado, yeah. blah, blah. I get that. Okay. But identity is my character. Identity. So identity is well, how I think about myself. Re identity re remember, is stop. Yeah. Are we confused with true self that's in, that's in here someplace that's elusive as hell? If you're talking about self, in the, with a capital S. It resides in the character. But at first, it's a little elusive. It, it's there, but it's mm, there. That's why we clear out that easy, easy, easy. We're on our way back to a finer level of the original self that you are. You have an original soul. Uh, so, so there's maybe what you're trying to talk about. Uh, so the reason I brought up character was because the self resides in the character. But, uh, and we're going to track that with the eye, ease of the eye. Ah, uh, how oh, I feel, or, or I, let's say I feel, I sense better. Okay, you're progressing easy, and you sense, have a better sense of things. Yeah, that you're starting to tap that eye, that soul eye that's present is starting to show itself more and more and more. Remember, that eye has also been twisted up or covered, covered. So part of our training is to easy to, to let it unwind and uncover to begin to show that it's here. Is, it, is that too much for you? Um, I, I get that, um, that it keeps getting, as you keep settling, as you keep opening, that you, that a finer, a finer eye, finer self, you start tapping into more of that self. I get that. I get that. I just don't know what you mean by the word identity. I don't know either. Let's see. Who am I right now? I'm here in this world. I need a name. I need a name to get a passport. I need a passport to travel around the world. Uh, I don't know where I'm going. Uh, where are we again? Why don't you call me on this one? I'll go round and round with you. Okay, but that's fair. We're, we, we got a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Thank you, Amy. Uh, it's, it's, thank you so much, Amy. Yeah. And next up is Denny, Dennis Kriakos. And uh, Dennis uh, has uh, shared with uh, Nado Sensei and now with the rest of us. And don't worry, Dennis, this is going to be streaming YouTube. His personal journal entries from two dates this fall. Uh, the first is November 28th. I believe that was Thanksgiving Day. And then another one from September 18th, which we'll come to 
later. So uh, first, uh, uh, Dennis has allowed us to read this. So I notice there are moments when I get more and more frustrated. I get to that small place where I begin to feel boxed in. Sometimes I don't notice when it begins to happen and suddenly I'm there. And once I'm there, it feels like I can head further into that direction without even knowing it. Things get real bad fast. For example, every morning I get up early, put on coffee and do some processing. Then I have some time to myself and it's been feeling pretty good, feeling confident that I'm heading in the right direction. Then suddenly another day I wake up and notice that I'm getting small again. No matter what I do, same coffee, same processing in the morning, nothing seems to work. It doesn't feel right. I'm distracted. I can't go to the place I need to be or want to be. And things get really bad. Everyone annoys me. I can't be around my family. I can't talk to people, whatever. Then one day, like today- Lauren, we got to stop here someplace. Uh, it's the last sentence. Then one day, like today, I wake up, process a bit, and feel better. What the hell is going on? So remember how I operate. If you ask three questions or something, I'm lost. So I stop you on one and wait for the next. I don't do the long-winded stuff. So, okay, I like the uh, being pushed and catching that it uh, pushed you into tighter and tighter and tighter. We have diagrams, we've shown this be before. Uh, push into tighter, tighter, tighter. If you were to continue to get pushed, you can get so tight you are crazy. I mean crazy, okay? Medically certified crazy, okay? Or you can be pushed nicer, nicer where you're so bizarre you're crazy that way. Okay. But anyway, being pushed into tighter and tighter. Uh, and again, what I said to uh, Danny, I think is, back, is good for you here, uh, that I'd like people to recognize uh, this push earlier. Uh, now, maybe, maybe one way, again, is to be more, uh, let's say, more settled to the point where it becomes more your norm. So that if you start energy start to come, you you notice that first push because you're getting pushed off your normal calmness. So to really establish some uh, some main thing, basic grounded sort of kind of calm, and really I don't know what highlight that. So anytime I start to get pushed off of that a bit, I catch it faster because I've established this uh, level a little clearer, okay? Um, if, okay, I, I like the brain thing, you know, the brain map. Uh, so if I'm in a feeling, easy, so feeling level brain, feeling, and I've established a feeling level, and I'm just using brain as sort of an indication of location, which is sort of strata feeling level brain, if I establish that as my, my uh, say, a good, a very good daily norm, then anytime I get pushed past feeling brain into the thinking brain, I'll pick it up pretty quick. Is that, is that almost okay? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So you're saying to find what that is basically for me, for example, you know, wherever. It was for you. Yeah. Yeah and notice when notice when I get pushed off of it or get pushed around. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It helps if we can pick it up earlier because if it goes too far, sometimes it's very hard. Uh, you, uh, the, you might have a tendency of working off of that. Now you're in trouble. Your wife won't like it. You're yeah. in deep shit, man. Yeah, I know that's what happens. That's exactly kind of what happens. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like two hours later, it's like, what the hell just happened? You know, everything was great, nice, and then look at me here now. It's what, and it, I kind of lose it in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, so that's why I wanted the group uh, uh, to, to uh, again, be in the wind tunnel and feel the early surges and to sort of begin to recognize them. But I guess we have to be at a place where it's easier to recognize them. If I'm running around, I won't recognize I'm being pushed because I'm too busy running around. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then no more push to that. And I'm running around accomplishing nothing. <laughs> Still running, but nothing's being accomplished. Uh, and some people begin to catch it there. They realize I haven't accomplished anything all day, but I've been working hard. What went wrong? That's it so, right there. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Uh, so a good for all of us uh, uh, again to get you know, out. Uh, maybe change your level of norm, which this work should should do, uh, to where you're a little more grounded, a little more settled, and that will facilitate recognizing a push uh, earlier where you can deal with it more at the moment, as opposed to getting pushed off as a tight crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, I probably missed something. Uh, Lauren, did I miss a, a Yes, Sensei, the, the sense of uh, not every day is the same. Ah. Some days you wake up, eh, and other days you wake up, ah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you see, the, the, the beat of creation, it beats. It beats. And so I could be Robert, and I go to bed, and for whatever reason, bing, I'm Bobby. What the hell? Uh, I don't expect to be able to hold it 24-7. Don't expect that. Uh, So because it moves, there are some days where it pushes and some days where it pulls. Easy. Easy. And when it pulls, some people don't like a pull. It feels like I'm going backwards or, or, or it's downtime. They don't like downtime. See, that's the pull. I don't want to be down. I should be up and bright and active. They don't like downtime. They don't know what it is. Downtime is bringing you to a better level. And then you'll hit a spot, and from there, ha, ha, boom, it'll be the next resurgence. And then we don't go out on the resurgence. We sort of learn just to sort of hold the status quo with it so you can function at that level. Yeah. Now, in trying to function at that level, sometimes you might be pushed out of that level, and you get ahead of yourself a little bit. Or sometimes at that level, it may start to kick back and you're going, yeah, I feel pretty good. And then the down thing starts. So we sort of temporarily, I don't know how to say that, hold a good level. But because you're in a bing bing situation, a push and pull, uh, you won't be able to sustain it. Even though, say, hey, I'm a great guy here. I want to hold this forever. Uh uh, sorry. It'd be nice, but sorry. It, the beat still going on. Yeah. Sounds like a song. The beat goes on. Yeah. yeah. I believe there is a song like that. And moving right along, we're on to De De uh, Dennis's second journal entry, if, if it's okay. Yeah. And this yeah. is from September 18th this year. Yeah. Sensei has mentioned the magician, quote unquote, yeah. the magician to me many times realized I still don't have my own definition about who the magician really is. And I'm curious, do I need to have a definition for that character? Do I need to know the goal so I know when I arrive? Where would that goal come from? I'm on. Okay, uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, this gentleman's occupation is doing magic shows, okay? So he's in the category of magician. Now, I, I say, no, no, he does magic tricks. But one day, if he processes properly, he can be, realize he is a magician. So I don't, myself, I don't call him a magician. I call him the guy that does magic tricks. Like I have a certain pattern that I follow. Okay, now, if I who do magic tricks can know what the magician can do, uh, maybe I can do it. It doesn't work that way. Okay, I don't know if this fits in, but when I was reading your stuff, I thought about 
you're psychic and, and you tell your five-year-old or something, one day you'll be cutting people open and taking their heart out and looking at it and putting it back. You wouldn't tell a five-year-old they're going to be a heart surgeon in the future, even though you're psychic. The five-year-old can't take that. So I'm not going to tell you. Or I, I, of course, you don't know what magician is. But if you process, you will potentially get there because it's there. How do I know it's there? Because your job is doing magic stuff and you like it and you're interested. You've been doing it for years. And, and so I know oh, that's a good lineage for you. It may not be your only lineage, but it's a damn good one. It's obvious it's a good one. It's obvious uh, uh, my lineage has, is related to martial arts. How do I know? I've been wearing a D and, and teaching since I've been 17. I wasn't a very good teacher, but I've taught. <laughs> okay. uh, but to get into finer and finer and finer, and then I get into, oh, Sensei's inner work. Yeah. So I don't know. Did we get anything out of that, Dennis? Yeah, a little bit. That, that idea of, you know, going back to what you said, you're doing martial arts since you were 17, and then you've kind of followed that line. See what you are now teaching since I was 17 right sorry teaching right <laughs> there's a there's a direct there's, there's a direction that it goes into that lineage and that's that's an interesting that's an interesting uh piece right there the what's the direction where 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 am I headed you know you may not know where you end up but there certainly is as a direction that it when you get to a level and begin to experience the, and allow the energies at that level, it'll mix up a character who will have a better sense of who he is and how things work, uh, and just da, da, da. Yeah. And, and just keep following that. And the potential is there's a magician behind all of that. You're on, you're online. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, so I, uh, a magician's a big word. Uh, what's an archetype? Magician is an archetype. It's like one of the majors. Awada goes crazy over magician. I think those sensei like magician uh, also for, for, for him. Uh, I have a faint interest in that word for me, but not as much as Wada or, or something. Uh, I have a faint interest in magician. Uh, well, I think you. <laughs> I've been curious about that archetype a lot as well lately. And that's kind of where, where I, that's where I, why I kind of wrote that down and that, that I, that the energy of that, you know, so it's a, it's a fascinating a place, a fascinating yeah. thing. If you experience finer levels of your lineage, uh, it'll clarify at that level and you continue and it'll clarify at another level. Uh, and along the way though, yeah. Good enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If, if not enough, you got my number. All right. Thanks. L Thank you, Lauren. Dennis. And so the next person wrote and asked to be remain anonymous. So the person who wrote it will know that I'm reading their question, but everybody else, this is from anonymous. Uh, I'm enjoying the sessions. I now better understand the process. I need time to practice. Uh, a couple of points I've been thinking about. In Aikido, could Nado Sensei please talk about the role or the expectation of Uke and the character of Uke relative to the expectation and the character of Nage? That's the first one. Okay. Katja, you available? Okay. Uh, so, one way. Whoops. One way to look at it is uh huh. Back. Sorry. Yeah. That's good. One way to look at it is uh, we agree to practice it together. Right now, she's not. Uh, she's okay, and she is creating the situation. Okay. And then there'll be a response from Nage to let a character be there who is equal 
to the situation. And then, of course, we re re reverse back and forth. Uh, so, again, what, what to say here? Uh, so, a proper uke uh, knows what game we're playing and gives us uh, a certain amount of energy. Uh, let's say 20 pounds of energy from uke so that nage can mix up a 20 pound person, okay, 20 pound character, 20 pound character, and the 20 pound character should be able to deal with the 20 pound situation. Then we move along. And uh, because I've done pretty well at 20 pounds, uh, partner realizes that, or I say to my partner, I feel pretty good. Can you give me a bit more? I'm saying to her, could you increase the situation? Because I think I'm ready to increase the character. Okay. So she gives me a little bit more where my first move doesn't quite do it. She's cramping me a bit here. Okay, so she's a 25, 30 pounder. Okay, 30 pounds, 30 pounds. Uh, almost, but not quite. I still felt a little crowded in there. 30 pound situation. Oh, there we go. 30 pound character. Okay, I boxed myself in a little bit. Uh, uh, Dennis, keep in mind what I just said. I boxed myself in. Really? 30 pounds, I need a little bit more room here. Okay, uh, so they, she represents the situation. Okay, then we practice with my system uh, mixing up a character equal to that situation. Okay, another way of saying it would be, uh, depending on the audience, I might change it to, uh, she's talking to me. And she had to speak clearly and all of that so I can hear what she said clearly. Okay, so she improves her speaking capabilities while I'm improving my listening capabilities. And later we re reverse. I did this at a business workshop once. Uh, and one guy was realized how he was speaking to people was screwing them up. When he was speaking, they get flustered and he realized it was his fault he wasn't presenting to them in a manner that they could understand it that they could be comfortable with it so he corrected his presentation as uh uke the speaker he really caught it. he was really impressed by it i thought it was a good piece of work on his part thank you uh did we cover that uh lauren did we cover that yes sensei and so um, the next question from Anonymous is uh, he notices that people can anger very quickly. And in ang getting angry, they evoke, they can evoke an angry response quickly. There is a role for the process here, I think. But can yes. this be done fast enough to avoid the angry response? I suspect Eventually. the answer is yes, through practice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One way of looking at it is, uh, and I can use that one because I, I come out of that angry school. Okay. Uh, if I'm, let's say, on the edge, then it doesn't take much for uh, that flow up through me to get me out there. Okay. A little bit on the edge. I'm not really deeply settled, calmer, ah, I'm not there. I'm sort of on the edge. Now I get a lot of, of power as a quality through me, okay? Uh, that one comes up pretty easy for, for me. Uh, so if I have a first main quality of the universe, power is, is, is quite strong. So because I've got power as a push, if I'm on the edge, a little bit of power, and I could get angry real fast. I mean, it's so easy to tighten up those fists. I didn't even think about that. It just happened. I'm, I'm, I'm on the edge. So settling all of that stuff, and then to track the anger is what I did. Because I realized my anger was getting dangerous. I wanted to kill. Okay. So I joke. I say I 
But if I kill somebody, they send me to jail, and I'm too handsome and young to go to jail. I better figure out what this is. I'm joking, but I was also serious. Uh, and as I track the anger slowly sitting with each stage of it, remember how the words get finer and finer and finer? I, uh, that we mentioned Danny. Uh, I begin to track that that was creating anger and it, uh, don't remember exactly, but it's like at, at first uh, or after a little while it was just, I could sense a, a red heat thing <coughs> pushing me, okay? And, uh, and I sat with that and I said, oh no, no wonder they uh, show people as getting angry as blowing their top or, or fiery. I thought I was, I was feeling that fire and hanging out. Went deeper, easy, open, next dimension level. And anyway, I got eventually to a place where uh, it wasn't angry. See, I started with anger and backtracked it. And it wasn't angry. It was just damn powerful. It had, but it had no ax to grind. It wasn't saying I'm angry at that guy or that situation or something. It was just power. I went, whoa. And I had a big insight then. I realized, what if all the words do the same thing, that all words backtrack have a finer, more original, truer sense. That was one of my big insights, okay? By being angry and wondering about it and tracking it back, I'm following that pattern, okay? When I'm on the edge, a little bit of power, bing, I, I'm off. A little bit deeper and a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. It's just not angry. It's just powerful. And, and to hang out and just let the power. Uh, so for a skinny little guy, I'm kind of powerful sometimes. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I threw one of Seagull's, uh, not main, uh, uke. Uh, well, I did him too. Uh, one, one of Seagull's uke's in a class we were having. Uh, just a basic blend, but he was coming in strong. And so, bing, and he really flew on that basic blend. And he came up to me after and said, you generate a lot of power for a, a little guy. And I said, yep. Uh, and anyway, that sorry mean anything, whatever. Did we cover that, Lauren? Yes, Sensei, Where and there's we? a third, one last point uh, from oh, yeah. Anonymous. Okay. Uh, he asks, is the confusion around what Aikido is and isn't linked in your, do you think, to Aikido's lower popularity and criticism from people involved in martial arts and combat sports like MMA? It appears, to, it occurs to me that yoga and Tai Chi are more popular right now than Aikido, but couldn't Aikido be seen to overlap with many of that, with them and have many of the same benefits? Back in the day, we were the leaders of this. <laughs> we lost it someplace. Let's see if I can say this right. Uh, if I say it wrong, I'm going to turn off a lot of Aikido people, and then I'll turn off the other side of the Aikido people because we got this dispersion of Aikido beliefs. Okay, where the hell are we? Uh, yeah. Earlier days, there was a lot of focus on being centered and energy flow. That, that was our starting stuff. And see, it came sort of out of Koichi Tohei's presentation. He was a head teacher in Japan and he came to Hawaii and presented Aikido and then California, of course, was next. And so we had a lot of that influence and a lot of that influence was being centered, uh, keep one point, weight underside, settle down, and, and energy flow. Uh, now to get energy flow, you settle and open and energies flow. So you're already at a different sense of, of things. And uh, so that's how we started. It was a good influence uh, that through the years we've lost. Okay. Uh, so where am I going to go? Uh, tai Chi. I think I mentioned Tai Chi before. Tai Chi is a fighting art. Okay. Uh, when we talk about the Tai Chi masters, we don't mean the exercise teachers. We mean the fighters. And some of those guys are wow. Okay. And 
But because they're doing inner work, uh, back to the exercises, they're doing inner work Tai Chi, nobody goes up to those people in the park and says, I'm tougher than you are. Because they're not saying they're tough. They're saying we're doing this inner process and we're moving better and we feel healthier and, and we're going to live longer than you. Uh, so where, where am I going? Uh, so our, our, our focus, unfortunately, went out, uh, our focus, some people in Aikido's focus went out into this physical performance of a martial art technique to the point where other martial arts would say, I doubt you. I think I can take you, man. Let's do it. I don't worry about that because I don't go that far out with it. I do inner work. So I don't have arguments with those guys about uh, fighting. I present like we train so that we go home, we don't punch out our wife. And if I lay that scenario out to the fighters, and I've done that before, and their families that are there, you'll see a lot of women go, because they know those guys are punching out their ladies. And I'll see a couple of guys go, uh, and you know, those are the punchers. Uh, so I don't say my Aikido technique is better than your jujitsu technique or whatever. I say what I'm doing. I'm doing a place where I get more centered. I'm calmer. I'm more aware. Okay. But if you go out too far with this martial art, this is what I do that people are going to say, let's see if it works, man. Of course they are. Does it work against MMA? I don't give a shit. I'll do the best that I can do on a physical thing, uh, but I'm not going to go crazy over that because I'll stop doing this. But I know that if I do this, that could eventually happen. I do move pretty good. I do pretty good techniques. Okay. But I, I, I don't care. I care about this inner work. Oh, since they went inner work and it manifested outward into somebody that couldn't be defeated. He was out of sight, man. Okay. But it wasn't because he continued and continued and continued. He tried to tell people, he said, uh, what are you doing out there? Uh, don't get into forms. He said, but, but, but he showed forms. Yeah, as a starting place, here's a form. Now let's get finer and see how that form goes because we got finer. And we sort of, too many lost the direction. They got carried away into that outer and lost the inner. Oh, they talk about the inner, some people. Now you got the halves and halves. They talk about the inner. They'll mention center now and then. Uh, it's kind of vague on energy, but they might throw that word out. They'll talk about love, <laughs> harmony, uh, uh, but that actual inner experience, actual. And as that gets better, then your movements will get better. But by that time, you shouldn't be worrying about who you can beat up. It's kind of silly. By the time you get that good, you're too old. <laughs> okay. Or does our some somebody better? Yeah. It's like boxing is a champion. Next year there's a brand new champion because the champion got beat. Uh, how far are you going to go with that? Okay. Uh, something like that. Anyway, that's a big discussion and part of the reason I passed on uh, uh, Dusty's thing about what, why are we all coming into Aikido? It's just too dispersed right, right now. Okay, but I'm for the inner development approach. All right. Thank you, Sensei. Where the hell are we? Thank you, Sensei. Uh, next question, next comment is from Linda Eskin. And uh, uh, she talks about uh, the challenges of creating a da da daily practice. So, uh, Linda, I'm just reading the second part of your comments. Perfect. Linda Wright wrote, I find it really hard to come up with questions about this embodied work. It's sort of on a different channel from my verbal questioning self. Maybe the different brains Nado Sensei's been discussing, you know, 
talking about music is like dancing about architecture. But there is something I'm finding challenging. And maybe you can give me some direction, please. I feel I'm really good at acquiring information, but less skilled at putting it into practice, doing the work. In the coming year, I feel like I should do, I want to do more more solo weapons training, more movement exercises, more meditation. But I find myself forgetting to keep this work at the level of consciousness each day, at my level of consciousness each day. I'm planning to post a reminder sheet with some key words and phrases where I see it often. I'm thinking of adopting do anything, do any dumb thing as a practice and settling, opening, breathing through levels. Does that seem like a good daily ritual practice? Is there something more or different, Nado Sensei, that you could suggest to me? Thank you. Okay. I used to make a lot of uh, jokes about posting a sign to remind you, but I was also serious. It's okay, you know? Uh, like I asked Katya, uh, uh, I don't know, let me know when the dishwasher is full because I'm the guy that usually empties it. But I forget, so she puts up a little sign by the coffee pot, empty the dishwasher. Oh, thank you, okay. Uh, all right, so, we, okay, so I like signs. <laughs> uh, dumb practices, yes, but how dumb? If your practice is scratching your nose and you better dimension, I don't know, I felt the same, no, better dimension, that's kind of, too dumb. Susan uses a dumb practice of cutting wood. Okay. Uh, Catherine mentioned a dumb practice of changing because she's got a pile of dirty dishes. Good, good. Uh, so make your dumb practice. I, I don't know what to say about a dumb practice. Good question. Uh, to me, swinging a bouquet can be a dumb practice. A good dumb practice and same cutting wood. Uh, going for a walk and changing dimensions as a walker. Good practice. Uh, so yeah, dumb, but don't go crazy with the word dumb. Wouldn't want you scratching your nose all day wondering why you're not at a better level. <laughs> not that it couldn't be done, but dear God, I don't know. Anyway, don't go there. Uh, what I miss. Oh, that whatever you're doing, realize it's a process training thing, okay? See, Susan said it well. She said, how important it is to line up. What she's doing also when she's lining up is saying, okay, now I'm going to cut wood, but it's my practice process time. So she sets it up. It's the wood, and it's going to be a wood cutter, and she lines up. So it's distinct for her that it's a practice development thing. Okay, so I like the way she really emphasized that lineup, how important that is for her, because it changes it from just another damn job. You know, I got to do the damn dishes again. Uh, then you won't get anything out of it. But if you go, oh, I'll take a moment here and realize I want to play a game here. I'm going to line up. There's dirty dishes situation, and there's a character someplace here that is okay with that, easy, settle open. And then you go through a process of training, boom. So the dumb job of dirty dish, doing dirty dishes is a process. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Thank, Thank you, you yes, appreciate yeah. it. Thank you, Sensei. Thank you, Linda. And the next question is from Ken Cron. Last one, people. Well, Where actually, it? Sensei, there's, no. there's, there's more. more. Oh, and they keep coming God. in. Oh dear God. But we'll you take with Ken get... because that was the last one that was received no more than six hours after the deadline. There are oh, okay. Sounds a like few of them that me. came in even after that. So Kenny, I'm gonna read for you. So Kenny wrote, development is enhanced by quiet. As we practice, as we move through life, the universe is giving us feedback. The louder we are, the more difficult it is to hear the feedback. And 
And Sensei, and, you wanted to take that oh, as a... Oh, okay. As a, uh, yeah, the quiet, enhanced by quiet. Uh, yeah, it's a basic, easy, hush, downtime, dark time. Uh, so whatever words you'd like, easy, seems a good word for some people. Okay, hush. In a hushing mode. Uh, yeah, it's, it's part and parcel of the beginning of this process. Yeah. Uh, it's part of settling. It's related to settling to get to a better place. Calm. Uh, but not, I'm nervous, I'm calm. Calmness is a thing itself. Calmness. So, yeah, quiet, easy, hush, calmness. Yeah, they're all touching the same thing. Yeah. Okay. And the second part. And the was... second part. And and Ken, forgive me, but I've edited what you wrote just a tad, so it's easier for other people to understand. John Cleese, the the comedian, when talking about creativity, says that creative leaps come from being totally open, and effective execution comes from being totally closed. When you're talking, taking that last step to jump across the chasm, you should not be thinking about your jumping technique. You should be in closed execution mode. But, or and, when you're trying to improve your jumping technique, you should be open and open to practicing new ideas, radical ideas. And, and let me say that the open, I'm relating back to the quiet from the first statement. Right, so just elaborate, Ken, so Sensei understands. No, I got it. I don't, don't, don't get him going. <laughs> OK. Uh, yeah, I've laid this out before in, in, in classes. Uh, but let me uh, follow his first. Open, open. It's part of the process of opening to the next level of you. Boom. When that next level of you mixes up that character, okay, in the, uh, what, a jumper we have here or whatever it is? Sure. Whatever, a jumper. Yeah. Uh, mixes up a character. Uh, it's the character that jumps. I don't like the word that he used called uh, open and we'll call this closed. I, I think that I, I don't like that word closed. It's here's the process to get to a better character. Now here's the better character and he's the activation. He jumps. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah. I don't like the word closed, but it, um, I don't know if people would take closed. I got to be closed. I don't know what to do with that word. But I've laid that out many times in Aikido. And I tell people, in a martial arts, God forbid, in a martial arts situation, real martial, a street situation, uh, you don't have time to process. You can't go, wait a moment, or I settle and open. Wait a while, I'm mixing to get the character. In that situation, it's right there. Okay, the attacker's there and moving. Uh, all you can do basically is hey, so the character at that moment reacts. May not be your best character, but that's all the time you got. Don't try to deal with that attacker and process. You ain't got the time. You've got to hey, have the best character you can get there in that split second. But as you practice, you can get very fast. When Osente did hey, uh, that, there was a fantastic thing happening. His haze were unbelievable. Okay. Uh, so that, 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 that sense, so I've told that story many times, or that example, many times to the students. Don't try to deal with this when you're in mid process or don't deal with this. Uh, don't, did you say this yet, Lauren? Don't deal with it. Don't check out your style when you're in mid leap over the chasm. Did you say that yet? Uh, uh, Kenny wrote, when you're jumping over the chasm, you shouldn't be thinking about your jumping technique. <laughs> yeah. You should change modality. 
It's the jumper who jumps. And he's aware, but he's not over here studying it. He's in, in his experience aware, which is different than coming over here and being aware and looking at it, critiquing it or whatever, whatever. Yeah. Okay? Yep. Yeah. Well, do you want to play with, um, instead of open and closed, Benkyo and Keiko? Say yeah, that again, please, that Richard. I, 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 I heard him, I'll say it. Okay. Uh, instead of open and closed, could you use the word, or would you like to use the word, Benkyo and Keiko? Uh, I always use those in the Japan days. Uh, Benkyo was what we did at the coffee shop. And that was to sit around and dialogue about Aikido, the philosophy, why are you in Aikido, and, and da da, and what do you think about O Sensei, and, and just to kind of get more open and hmm. Keiko was what actually, boom, the actual body moving at the level it was at. So, it, yeah, that's an okay way of using that. It could be fine tuned, but yeah, Benkyo, Benkyo Keiko. Kenny, did we cover uh, everything you wanted to cover? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it, it's just kind of where I am in my practice now. And, and, and just to, um, I mean, I'm pretty creative. Um, and I, I think I've been spending too much time in that. And I'm, I'm trying to find my Keiko. So thank you. That was good. Thank you. And so, uh, Sensei, we had a late entry from Patrick Fitzsimmons, uh, which uh, we didn't have in the, in the stack when we uh, talked uh, this afternoon. And so I'll just read it out uh, from Patrick uh, Fitzsimmons. Should be, there he comes. Dear Sensei, as I reflect on classes in the virtual dojo, I find myself remembering the one by one, two by two, three by three boxed in practice that we did. That practice made clear again, the potential for uncomfortable and harmful self-imposed restrictions. It also showed the potential for self-generated openness to being freer and fuller. This is an important lesson for me to be reminded of. And it's one of the, it's, it's one that I'd like to develop further. And Patrick continues and say that over the period of the virtual classes, he thinks he's, I think I've gotten freer and fuller and he has several examples. He scheduled an enjoyable visit to an uncle he, he showed that he had freer initiative. He was more forthcoming when he met girls online, more free to, be to take initiative. When he went for walks, instead of looking down at his feet, he was looking at the scenery, freer to take a wider view. When he walked, he felt his body more rhythmic and flowing, more natural to be freer. And so he summarizes by saying, it seems to me that I've been more in the flow and that's felt good. And it's also seemed to me, Patrick wrote, that there is a, a complementary relationship between being in the flow and accessing the energies of the underworld. Meaning that accessing the energies of the underworld facilitates being in the flow and vice versa. Yeah. This is something I'd like to explore more in the coming year. Yeah. And it, it reminded me that in the, back in the day, uh, when we used a lot of key in our Aikido, or use the word, uh, that we said key flow. I don't ever think we said key force. It was key flow. Let your key flow. It was always key flows that I remember. Uh, so there's a nice relationship with that. And yeah, the better this, the better this, better that. Uh, so whether we're doing just the character better or the character starting to recognize, uh, see clearer the beauty of the situation or the possibilities of the situation, now we're getting to that beat. So first this beat, 
and then the beginnings of this to that and that to this. Yeah. So we're beginning to broaden out the picture here a bit. So yes, yes, and yes. Uh, I don't have anything more, but again, Patrick has my number. If he's really going to be worried about something, he'll call me. Yeah, Patrick, Thank you all right? Thank you, Sensei. Thank you. And uh, uh, Sensei, uh, yeah. we have a, a, a couple of people who didn't write in who have texted me that they would like to ask you questions if you go. Go. And I'm so okay. David go. Floater, David Flater, could David. you, David? Yeah, here I am. And so yeah. uh, uh, I'm going to read David's question. I have been appreciating working with what Sensei called the body brain. So he started calling that about one month ago. Of the three brains he was teaching about, in my understanding more, at least, okay. <laughs> there's the mental brain, the feeling heart brain, and the body sensing brain. I've been appreciating working with the body brain and the subtle sensing level involved. I say this after being stuck so much of my earlier life with thinking and then feeling, which opened up greatly. Now I'm very much appreciating this new sensing with the body brain. For me, okay. it helps staying in the bottom of my feet when I get to and stay in this brain of the body. Yeah, reference, feet. Okay, uh, I my map of the brain. See, it's arb arbitrary, but anyway, here's my map, the, the basic thinking brain, uh, which can be expanded on you become smarter by studying or eventually become an intellectual. It's an expansion of that. Now, uh, I, again, arbitrary. I come down to a feeling brain. Okay. I begin to feel. Yeah. Then, again, arbitrary. I like uh, sense feeling. Just a finer level of feeling. Sense feeling. I just made that word up. Okay, we could have stayed with feeling and then ultra feeling brain and then really ultra ultra feeling brain or something. It's arbitrary. How you, this is a map that I find comfortable and I thought might be comfortable for the normal group. Okay, anyway, thinking brain, feeling brain, sense feeling brain, sensing brain. When you get into a sensing brain, now you can continue after a while with finer dimensions of sensing and finer, finer, finer dimensions of sensing. Okay, so that's the map that I use. So whatever map you use, oh, sensitive, they just be consistent. Know where you are, know what you're doing. Just be consistent. But that's the map that I would use. So thinking, uh, feeling, sense, feeling, sensing, what, whatever. Uh, but yeah, and to have a physical reference, oh, my feet are here when I'm feeling. Yes, cool, cool. Uh, what, double feedback? How do I know I'm feeling? How do I know I'm feeling? Well, you're a long way from feeling, my friend, you know. Ah, ah, ah. Can you feel the temperature at the feet level is different? Than the temperature up around your face? Huh. No, I can't feel that yet. Settle. Easy. Feel. At which time, well, I don't feel the temperature, but I do feel some soft vibration through my feet, through my ankle. Is that it? Good enough. Good. You're feeling. You're, you felt a vibration in your feet. You didn't feel that before because you're up here. Da, 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 da. So having that that reference, I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Uh, anyway, uh, yes, and you always were a major, and I always jumped on you because you kept trying to do everything from here. I said no, let's come down here a bit, and you thought about it, and you probably memorized my words. And you tried harder from here. Finally, finally, we're on our way. Once you kind of get on the way, you can really start to move a bit better. So yay for you. We should be finishing up because time. 
Yes, and Sensei, I have one last thank oh, one you, more. David. That's right. Okay, go. Uh, David, thank you. Thank you, David. And we have one last from Andrew L. And Andrew was listening to your earlier discussion about people, somebody, I think it was Dennis, that some days he feels one way and some days he feels another. And Andrew asked, and uh, I think I get this right, Andrew. Is it like some days you're a bit more yin and some days you feel a bit more yang? Yeah, whatever that means, yeah. Some days get, you're softer and some days you're eh, like that. Um, yeah. I just I just arbitrarily use yin and yang just to represent, you know, some days I feel a little more tighter and some days I just feel like just, no, a little bit more energetic, I suppose. That's it. Okay. Uh, tighter. So tighter, a little more open. You could possibly feel more energetic because you're more open to the energies. Tighter, the energies have constrained you in a bit. They didn't okay. want to, but I didn't notice I was being pushed, so I didn't open at the time where hopefully I'd catch it earlier and be open. Oh, something's bugging me. Hello there, what's bugging me? I'm here now, welcome. Ha ah, ah, ha ah. mm -hmm. hey, I'm alive. So that would be a real nice place, a level to be at where you pick it up like that. Uh, but if you're getting pushed smaller, you're being pushed. We talked about that with an earlier mm -hmm. person. Yeah. And as you settle and open, different. And there's beats of pushing and pulling. Some days I feel like going out. Some days I want to hang out by myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy when Koch is at work. I get to hang out with me and, and see what me has to say here. Mm -hmm. ah. And I get enough of that. And then Koch comes back. And oh, I'm happy to see Koch. And I'm up here. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so we all have these beats going on. Right? Mm -hmm. And we just uh, hope that the beats happen at the right time. <laughs> Thank I, you, I, I have a speech to give. I hope it's not a down pull in time. Well, the system's kind of smarter. We usually won't really pull you down mm -hmm. on, a, on a time where you have to go out. I, when I used to do a workshop, I noticed a pattern. Uh, I, uh, I would start to get a bit sick uh, right before I had to go to Esalen. Mm -hmm. And and by the time I got to Esalen, I was feeling fine. And I do a, a, a weekend or week, whatever it was. And then at the end of the workshop, going home, the damn illness would come back. It's like it got off my case because I knew I had a job to do. But but it wanted to be there. So as soon as I was finished with that job, there it was again. It happened more than once. I, so I thought there was a pattern there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Kini? Thank you, Sensei. And thank you, Andrew. And thank, thank you, you everyone. It's been uh, uh, quite a bit. And I, I, I want to thank everybody. And I'd like to uh, actually put the spotlight on a few other people, if we could. And so uh, 